It's time to look at ports and connections. Now, ports as in a computer port that you plug something into or create a connection with. So let's have a look. Ports and connections. Here is a general overview of the various kinds of ports or the most common kinds of ports you're going to find on most computers, whether they are desktop PCs or laptops as well. We're going to take a look at some of them close up so we can see how it actually looks. So here we have the VGA port. This is often used for an external monitor or an extra monitor. I've got a, a VGA port on my laptop and I've got another screen connected to that and this is used uh, via the VGA port. That's an actual photograph. There it is over there. That's what it looks like. You'll probably see this on plenty of computers and that's the plug, the connector that plugs into it. All right, makes sense. VGA. VGA stands for Video graphics adapter. Then we have the HDMI and it says here for high-end TVs and that's actually true because we use HDMI for uh, quality. All right, uh, let me explain. It stands for high definition multimedia interface. All right, high definition multimedia interface. That's what HDMI stands for. And the reason we like using HDMI is because it not only transfers video content, but sound as well, video and sound together. Whereas other older cables would only do video or audio. You'd have to have a video for audio and a, and a video for audio, a cable for audio and a cable for video. Now with HDMI, it transfers both of them at incredibly high speeds at exceptional quality. So there you can see there is an example of an HDMI port over there and there is an HDMI connector. That's what goes into that port. You with me? I hope so. Moving on, still with multimedia, we have a digital video interface or DVI. And again, on some computers, you will see a DVI port. It looks like any one of these. You've got the uh, uh, standard DVI port. You've got a mini DVI and a micro DVI. It depends on what the device is. It could be a laptop or a netbook. And that's what we have in terms of size. Here's an example. You can see there is a DVI port on the back of a computer and there is a DVI connection that plugs into it. Moving on to other weird and wonderful ports, we have the Ethernet port or an RJ45 port. Now an RJ45 or an Ethernet port is what we connect a network cable into to connect our computers to a network a local network or to um, a switch or a hub of some kind. There is an example. If you look at your computer right now, if you're on a desktop or a laptop, you'll probably have a port that looks just like this. You'll notice it's got a green light and a yellow light. That's important because those are activity indicators. And if there's a link, if there's a link, it's green. If there's activity, it's yellow and it, it flashes a lot. You'll see whenever something's happening, it'll flash a lot. So that's the shape of it there. That's the cable. If you go ahead and unplug the cable, not now, later, you can look at the cable and see that's what an RJ45 looks like, an RJ45 cable. And that's an Ethernet cable that connects you to the network or the local area network. A modem, on the other hand, it looks very similar to RJ45, but it's got fewer pins inside and fewer wires. You can see here, this is an RJ14. So you've got RJ45. RJ14. This was in the good old days when we had dial-up modems. We'd use our telephone to phone and uh, or connect to our internet service provider, our ISPs, but it was incredibly slow. So you don't find this a lot um, on a lot of devices anymore. Uh, some devices who are that they can dial and send faxes, for example, may still have this. There you can see there's an example, telephone connection one, telephone connection two. So this is for a telephone connection. You'll see them on old modems or fax modems as well, or fax modems on um, laptops or old desktops as well. And that's what it looks like. You see, it is very similar to the RJ45. So make sure you understand the difference. The USB port or bus, the universal serial bus connection has been around for a long time and it was revolutionary. It enabled very, very fast speeds and we were able to connect almost any device to our computer because of that. Here you can see we've got USB 
that transfers at a speed of 12 megabits per second. We have a speed of uh, 480 megabits per second, which is a USB 2, and then USB 3, which is the current speed, 5 gigabits per second. Here is an example of a standard USB port. There it is over there. You've, you're, you've seen these. You can recognize that right away without any problems. There is a typical USB plug. Now, it's worth noting that the USB 3 is blue. That's how you know it's USB 3. It's It's been color-coded, so it's blue. Now you know. Couple of other USB connections, USB A, USB B, Mini A, Mini B, Micro A, B, Micro B, but there you can see, there's your typical port there. There we have a Mini A, I think that is. Here we have a, a USB B. Often uh, printers will have this sort of connection. There is the port and there is the connector over there. A new one, not, not new, new, but uh, still relatively new in the terms of how long it's been around, is the USB Type C. Type C is a new type of USB connection port and connector because it doesn't matter which way you have it. You can have it this way or that way, it still plugs in. The problem with the older USB connectors is that you have to have it, you had to have it the right way first. You had to have it the right way to get it in. And most of the time, Murphy's Law, you would go ahead and push it in and it would be the wrong way and you have to turn around and then push it in and it would be okay. But um, yeah, now we don't have that problem anymore and a lot of new phones, not the iPhones, the, a lot of the, the Samsung phones and LG and all the rest are actually coming out with USB-C connectors. Before we had very, very fast USB and HDMI connections, we had what's called FireWire. Now, FireWire is not as popular anymore because it is very limited now in what it can do in terms of speed, but it's still around. And FireWire was used for uh, media devices, video cameras or digital cameras. The FireWire port would enable speeds of up to 400 megabits per second, but now USB 3 surpasses that and so does HDMI. But there you go, that's what the, the plug looks like, or the, the port looks like. There you have the connector over there, and that's FireWire. You can see that's the symbol for FireWire, and it was, it was also had the uh, IEEE 1394. That was like a, a standard that it had to have. Of course, uh, what is a computer without sound? So let's have a look here. Audio mini jack sockets, and you, you'll definitely recognize these, especially the light green one. That's normally where you plug your uh, speakers into. Okay, if you've got like multiple speakers, like a surround sound system with five speakers, you can have a, like there's your woofer over there, your stereo line out right to left. Uh, you've also got an input one here. This is an input for a microphone. Normally it's that pink color and the stereo line in has normally been the, the greeny or light blue color. Stereo line in, oh, stereo line in is for recording and stereo line out is for listening to music. So it's another one. Here's a digital, digital audio. Here it is here. And uh, some computers have them and some computers do not. The eSATA drives, these are connection ports that will connect a hard drive to the computer, normally straight into the motherboard. Here you can see an example. This is connected onto the motherboard over there. That is what the cable looks like, and it connects a hard drive, either internally or an external hard drive, directly to the motherboard. So you do get external hard drives that have these special connections, but even internal hard drives these days, the SAT support is just faster. It's all about speed at the end of the day. Another one here is the PCMCIA port. That's a bit old now. It was a massive uh, slot on the side of a laptop and you'd sort of push it in and pull it out and you could put in an expansion card or a Wi-Fi card or things like that. But that is quite old. We, we don't really see them today so much anymore. Okay, moving on to connecting peripherals. Let's first discuss what is a peripheral. It's a lovely word, but do you know what it means? A peripheral is basically an external device, something on the periphery. You know, like you have peripheral vision, you know, you can see on the side, it's like that. An external device, something on the side, it adds additional functionality 
to the computer system and it is connected via a specific port. So you either can connect it via a USB port of some kind or HDMI port or a Firewire port. It depends what you're connecting it to. So a peripheral is any device that you are connecting to your computer to add some extra functionality to the computer. Let's have a look at some examples. We have over here, we've got the uh, handheld scanner. We have a, a USB hub, very handy. This is an LTE modem or an LTE dongle, they sometimes call them. Here we have a webcam. In fact, this is the same webcam that I'm actually using now. This is a webcam, also a peripheral. A printer is a peripheral. And you have a, a VR uh, headset as well. So anything that you connect from the outside into your computer is a peripheral. Let's have a look at the way we connect things to our computers. Uh, we'll look at wired first and then wireless. Wired, well, this is a Ethernet cable. We already looked at the Ethernet port and the connector. Here's the cable and you can see it's got the connectors on each side. That's an Ethernet cable. What is this one? HDMI. HDMI cable, there it is over there. And this is, uh, this is the one I told you about. That's not as used so much anymore, but that's what it looks like. So go back and have a look and see if you recognize it. That, and you can see, haha, there it is, the IEEE 1394. You see that? Firewire, firewire cable, cool. And of course, the good old standard USB. And there's the USB two, no, USB B, there it is there. Cool. Let's look at wireless connections, okay, like Bluetooth. Now, when I say Bluetooth, if you're thinking Bluetooth like this, haha, <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, no, it's not that at all. It's Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a connection standard. It's a wireless frequency, and we use it to connect devices to each other. It's got a very limited range, okay, it's about 10 meters. Uh, give or take. Although, saying that, talking about Bluetooth, there is also Bluetooth um, LE, Bluetooth LE, which means low energy, and that's also brand new. That's pretty new, and that is, has a slightly longer distance as well. What does it? I'm going to check that out. Wireless connections, wireless connections using the wireless standard. There it is over there. 802.11 is a range or a frequency range that these wireless frequencies are allowed to operate on by law. And you'll see it's got B, G, and N. All that that means is that it's different speeds. It's uh, slow, better, faster. Okay. That's it. It's just different speeds and ranges that are possible. There is a nice little QR code. Go ahead and feel free to scan that QR code, pause the video, scan that, and that'll take you to a really cool page on all the ports and connections that we currently have available with technology. Very, very interesting. Now, the last slide, just to let you know and just to help you understand this, is that Wi-Fi does not equal internet access, okay? And you're asking me why? Because Wi-Fi is simply a connection technology. It's simply a wireless connection to a network. Okay, if the network is online and there's a router enabling computers to get online, fantastic, you can access the internet through your Wi-Fi connection. But the Wi-Fi wi doesn't mean internet access. So please keep that in mind and stop calling internet access Wi-Fi. It's not, okay.